Apologize for the late notice. I'm letting everybody know this, but we we're kind of playing with some weather things, and I kind of wanted a nice day when we brought everybody out here to meet Bear. Um, we'll tell you the as much as I don't want to admit this. Um, that's not his original name. He, he's had that name only for about two months now. Um, he was uh, born in Holland, and he did uh, about eight or nine months of training there. He came to the United States, and he was titled to a Schutzen III, uh, which is a working dog sport that originated out of Germany. And then a lady uh, from Canada bought him, and she was training him in French Ring, which is a French uh, working dog sport. Um, we were fortunate enough to find him when we were looking for a dog. And uh, the interesting thing about Bear is he's always been owned by women in, in, Fran or in Holland and in the United States and in Canada. And uh, his name is Iago, is his given name on his paperwork, but they affectionately refer to him as Stud Muffin. <laughs> I wasn't really interested in having a police dog named Stud Muffin, so we had to come up with a name. He's now Bear. He actually responds to that very well. And uh, I think that sounds a little more police appropriate. And I heard Tim so, wouldn't give up that name. Yeah, and we, yeah, we call Tim Stud Muffins. <laughs> Come on up here, real quick. <laughs> he likes squirrels, so that's probably what he's doing. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm going to give a disclaimer. He's been in training five weeks now since we got him. And you guys, if your parents know the story that I'm going to tell, your kids behave really, really well at home. But when you take them out to the store, they always know they can get away with just a little bit more. Combination of being in training and being at the store, he may goof off a little bit today. We'll talk about it, but he's going really well. One of the things we talked about earlier, uh, Doug and I were talking about, is we normally don't get a three-year-old dog to start with. We like to look for 18 months, 24 months when we do it. The thing that we had with, with Bear is he had a ton of training. He's very easy to train, and it kind of made it worth going for a three-year-old dog. We figure we lose about a year of his working life, but we probably gained about six months' worth of uh, training time. So to us, and we, he's got good health, uh, we expect him to, to get a, a good eight, ten-year working life. So we'll go ahead and we'll start out. We'll show some of the things we've been doing the last five weeks. And uh, Jim is probably really really nervous right now so we'll all be really kind to him this is his real first demo all on his own and he's kind of in the spotlight so uh, we're going to demonstrate some obedience everything we do with police work with the dogs relates around obedience uh, we expect the dog to do what we say when we say to do it so we do that as kind of a basis for everything else we do so we're going to demonstrate some healing control first we're going to try anyhow we'll see how well he does what we ask is what when we walk along that the dog stay to our, to our left side. If we stop, the dog stops. If we turn, the dog stays with us. If we do an about turn, the dog will stay with us. And we'll, we'll tell Tim to pick up his pace a little bit. He'll be exciting. And the dog always stays there. Even if Tim stops and backs up, he'll back up with me. He'll stay right in that same position. We can do an about turn, and we can do a change of pace. And the dog will stay in the same spot. We can even do a slow pace. And then we can go back to normal. One of the, one of the qualities we look for in a police dog is if you watch when they're working, you see how Bear looks up at him? It's a partnership. They've been together for five weeks. Bear has an extraordinary bond with his hand. And we play off of that to get the police work that we want. So we're going to do some distance control now. Sometimes when we're out in the field, we need to be able to tell the dog to change his position to move, different things like that. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. Notice he didn't say a word. That's a hand command. There are times when we're out, we don't really want the bad guy to know where we're at by saying command. So we need the dog to do things by hand. So now we need him to come to us, but somewhere in the middle, we need to tell him to do something else. So we want the dog always listening to what we have to say. Yeah. And then we'll call him on in. 
We don't teach police officers to be the <laughs> This is how he was taught, and we're not going to change it. It looks great. It's very nice to be here. So we goof around a little bit. We don't like to do routines all the time. Dogs start to expect that. And then we do an engagement game. All right, we're going to have Tim go off the field with him real quick, and I'm going to ask uh, Captain Riley to help me real quick. And we're going to set up our narcotics detection. This uh, little piece of equipment. Um, this is what we call a behavior shaping device. We actually just received this yesterday. The Central High Drug Enforcement Task Force bought this for us and speeds up our, our narcotics training process tenfold over the way we used to do it. We used to have aggressive alert dogs where they would scratch at the location of the narcotics. We now teach them to do like bomb dogs have always done, which is to indicate by staring at the source. Imagine that if you had an aggressive alert bomb dog, you probably only get to find one bomb in your career and you scratch it and blow it up. So what we do is we use this to shape the behavior of the dog. Behavior shaping device. And you see, it's I wish I had invented it, I'd be a millionaire now and probably in the Bahamas someplace. This is a great tool. We'll go ahead and bring bring Bear down. Like I say, we've done a little odor imprinting with him, and we have our state certification set for December 3rd. I'm confident that he'll have all four odors by then. We're only working on the odor of cocaine at the moment, but you'll see how quickly they learn with this. Last night's training was the very first time he had worked on this device, and watch how well he does with it. He checks that one, checks that one, nothing there, checks that one, nothing there, checks this one. He's still wanting to check. One of the they talk about with this is the dog will actually have a reward in its mouth and he'll continue to go back to this. He wants to get more and more rewards than he's got. So, all right. Can you get somebody help you do it another way? <laughs> I'm bossy, I know.
to our article search. <clears throat> you can throw any kind of article out there. Keys, gun, wallet. Uh, I've trained Ike to go out there. I can throw a thing out there if you can find it. Uh, it's showcasing. Anything that's small. Once he gets a little more training, you know, we'll teach him on how to find a smaller object. Right now he's, he's in the learning process, so he's, he's going through 